If the word phenomenon makes you want to crawl back into bed and never come out again because you are just wholly confused on what the heck phenomenon is and how to use it in your classroom, then you'll want to stick by and watch this video because I'm taking you through what a phenomenon really is and how it has to do, what it has to do with the 5E model. We're going to discuss phenomenon, hook, and the engage part of the 5E model. So let's go ahead and get started. Remember, the 5E model is designed to get students doing more inquiry. It's where they're doing all that heavy thinking. They're going through investigations and they're creating their own ideas and their own definitions and descriptions of what they are seeing First, before you hand them that information to clarify any misconceptions. In the 5E model, the engage phase should be a very quick, short phase. The whole purpose of the engage phase is to get students interested in the topic and to see what they already know. This whole thing should take less than 30 minutes, so less than a class period to do. You want them going right from that into exploring the topic. So what do you do during the engage phase? Well, that's where the word phenomenon comes in. You see, phenomenon can be anything. It's anything that the students will see, will watch, and they're gonna be curious about. It does not have to be an amazingly cool video. I know there's a lot of videos. If you Google phenomenon, you're going to find a lot of amazing videos. And some of them are really cool, but they probably don't have anything to do with your topic. So you'll want to find something and do something to hook them in that's going to make it about your topic. For example, when I do my phase changes, the phenomenon I like to use that really gets my students hooked is the triple point phenomenon. Now, what happens there? Well, they get to watch a substance freeze and boil at the same time. Now, up until this point, they have learned that boiling happens when you like put water on a stove and you see the bubbles coming up from when you're cooking water to get ready for make some pasta, right? And they know that freezing happens when you put something in the freezer, like an ice cube tray with water and you watch it freeze. They are totally separate events. One requires the adding of heat. The other requires the removing of heat. So when you show them the video of a substance that is doing both freezing and boiling, it completely blows their mind. And they start wondering what the heck is going on because it takes them to a place that they haven't been before. You have them asking questions like, how is that possible? What is that liquid? What is causing it? to freeze and boil at the same time. Is this real or is it CGI, right? You're getting them to ask questions, to wanna to know more. And that's what a good hook is and a good phenomenon. So, you know, phenomenon doesn't have to be that scary word. It can be just anything to get them thinking. When I get into light, when I start teaching light, one thing I love to do is the phenomenon of the index of refraction. And a very simple, great experiment to do is to take a Pyrex beaker like this and a test tube, a Pyrex test tube. And what you do is you fill the beaker up with vegetable oil and you can put the test tube in and they can see it. So the test tube has nothing in it. It's easy to see the test tube through that. Then what you do is you fill the test tube up with oil also, vegetable oil also. And then you put it back in and it disappears. So you can no longer see the test tube. 
showing them that quick, easy, simple demonstration gets the students wondering why. How is that possible? They can start asking questions. And that's what you want them to do. You want them interested, like, oh my gosh, that's like, no way. And you want them asking questions. What's causing it? What is it? Why is it, did, why does it disappear when it has the liquids in it? What is causing this, you know? And then you want them to try and come up with their own ideas. Why do they think this is happening? And that's where it starts. So the idea of that engaged phase is to number one, get them excited. Number two, have them asking questions. And number three, get them to start thinking. We want them to start thinking on their own and coming up with their own ideas. Then they can go into the explore phase and do a whole bunch of different activities and investigations where they're going to develop their understanding and develop their reasoning of what they're seeing with all that evidence and observations that they're doing. Another thing that you can do is when you're doing like properties of matter and density, like some students think that heavy objects are going to sink and light ones are going to float. So we talk about this and I have three balls or four balls here. And these balls are all the same size. So they're all the same size. And this one here. And this one, yes, this one is heavy, it's metal. But these three here, these three are all very light and they all feel like they are the same. So then you can take it and you can drop them in to a container and they'll notice that two of them float and one sinks. Then what you can do is you can fill another container up with salt water and hopefully most of the salt has um, been diluted and you can put it in again, oh, almost. So the idea is, and I love science because that doesn't always work. The idea is, and I should have used Epsom salt for this one to put a whole bunch in. Uh, you put it so that it's Epsom salt would make it disappear. The salt would disappear. And I forgot to grab some Epsom salt for this. Um, but the idea is that time it would float. So then you have them thinking, okay, what is going on here? I have sometimes it sinks, sometimes it floats. They all are very light. What's happening? So you can do a density one like that. You can also go to a website and you'll pro you probably know this website, but if you don't, let me go ahead and share you this website here. So on this website here, Phenomenon for NGSS, you can go to the Phenomenon Labor Library and searchable thing, and you can search for different things like force. And here you can get different videos and phenomenons to use in your class. But again, some of them are really cool, but make sure they go with your topic. You know, you can save the cool ones for like a fun Friday to get them thinking about it when it, they don't have to worry about their topic. But when you're talking about your topic, think of some other things. So for example, if you're doing forces, you could show them the human loop here and talk about centripetal force. How is it possible that he's able to run upside down, right? What is making that possible? You can get into that one here. Uh, there's sound barrier ones. So again, going through it, you can watch the slinky free fall and see how, how is it staying still? Why isn't it all falling at the same time? What's causing that, right? So that one would be a great one for compression before you get into that one. Again, looking at different ones that you can use and, and see what's usable. Because again, there are some really cool ones here. If we look at this, these are all the ones, they're really cool, right? Like that one's awesome, but I wouldn't use it because um, it might not lead my students into thinking about the topic. So you'll want to be looking at what can I do to help them learn about the topic? Like, for example, this one here, if I was doing electromagnetism, I might show this one here and have them want to know why, like what is slowing it down? So look at the different things, but remember, it doesn't have to be extravagant. It can be a simple demonstration that you do in your class. The whole point of the engage phase is just three things. Number one, get the students excited about the topic. 
bring in their interest, have them start wondering. Number two, have them question, just have them write a whole bunch of questions down. What do they want to know? You could even have a list of the questions in the classroom hanging up. These are the questions that we had in the very beginning. And at the end of that 5E unit, which a unit goes for about a week to two weeks, sometimes even three weeks, right? Come back to those questions. Can they now answer them? And then also you want them to start thinking about why it's happening, building those skills, the thinking. The 5E model is designed so that the teacher becomes less of the giver of information and becomes more of a coach and facilitator guiding the students through the process of thinking, drawing conclusions, analyzing information, and coming up with their own ideas of how the world works. So that's how you get the phenomenon. So don't make that word such a scary word because it's really not. It's just a fun and engaging way to get started in your unit. Now, if you would like more information on how to do the 5E model in your classroom, check out the link in the comments below because I do have a free 5E model guide that's gonna take you through the importance of the 5E model, what the different parts are, what students should be doing during the 5E model process, what the teacher's role is, and how to take those lessons that you already have and with a few tweaks and modifications on some of them, you can actually put them into the 5E model and turn it into a 5E unit. So go ahead again and grab that free 5E guide. Have a great day. Thank you for watching another Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond videos. For more ideas on how to incorporate science, technology, and skills for life into your classroom, go to adventuresinistem.com.